There are tons of different rigid insulation products on the market, from rigid foam board to rock wool to different composite materials, but how do you know which one is right for your wall assembly? These materials aren't necessarily interchangeable, and using the wrong ones can actually lead to unexpected problems, especially if you're not taking into account some of their properties like vapor permeability, fire resistance, R value, and thermal drift. In this video, we're breaking down rigid insulation and helping you to determine what type of insulation you should choose for your project. Let's get into it. So you want to install exterior rigid insulation for your project. Maybe you want to improve long-term durability or energy performance, but how do you select the right type of insulation board? When it comes to rigid insulation, there are two main categories, rigid foams and rigid fibers, both of which have different properties and a lot of variation within their own categories. Rigid foam products are exactly what you would expect to see on most projects with rigid insulation and what you'd typically be able to pick up off the shelf at a home improvement store. We're talking about EPS foam or expanded polystyrene, XPS or extruded polystyrene, GPS or graphite polystyrene, or polyisocyanurate. These are the most common rigid foam products that you'll find all over the building industry. Very rarely we'll sometimes see foam glass, but that's sort of an outlier. Now, rigid foam products can further be broken down into a couple of subcategories, thermoplastics and thermosets. Thermoplastics melt first when exposed to high temperatures, whereas thermosets burn. This is an important distinction because it determines how resistant your foam is to fire and heat, and it also determines how the product is manufactured. Polystyrene-based products like EPS, XPS, and GPS are thermoplastics. Polyisocyanurate and polyurethane foams are thermosets. Generally speaking, rigid foam products have a higher R value per inch than fibrous insulation products, which can be beneficial if you're trying to reduce the thickness of the assembly or the thickness of that exterior insulation so that it doesn't have a significant visual impact. However, rigid foam products are generally vapor retarders. At greater thicknesses, they can be very strong vapor retarders, or if they're faced with foil, there's basically no outward drying potential. Now, depending on how you design your wall assembly and how much rigid foam you have on the outside, this might not matter at all, but if you are building in a colder climate, it might be a good idea to bump up the amount of rigid foam insulation relative to the amount of cavity insulation so that you're keeping the backside of your sheathing nice and warm and closer to interior conditions. We have a whole video on how much exterior rigid insulation you need, which you can go and watch up here. However, rigid foams can also be useful as an exterior vapor retarder in humid climates or behind reservoir claddings like brick and stone to slow down inward vapor drive. Rigid foam products are generally moisture resistant. Not all of them are designed to be in submerged or constantly wet conditions, but they don't lose their integrity. XPS foam is the only rigid insulation that we would recommend in submerged conditions or constantly wet conditions because it doesn't really absorb moisture due to its extremely closed cell structure. A couple other things that you need to know about rigid foams. Ants and termites like to burrow into rigid foam products, especially if they're wet. You need to make sure that you have a bug screen detail closing off the rigid foam if you decide to install it on the outside of your building. Also, rigid foam products like XPS and Polyiso have a tendency to experience thermal drift where they lose their R value over time because the blowing agent gradually leaves the product. EPS and GPS foam don't really experience thermal drift because the blowing agent that's used is just ambient air. Rigid foams tend to have significantly higher compressive strengths compared to rigid fiber insulations. Now, before we talk about rigid fiber insulations, we have a brand new continuous insulation course which discusses all of these different design considerations in addition to how to integrate rigid insulation properly for a wide range of different building assemblies, window openings, and cladding materials. Click the link in the description below and you'll get access to our free training. We just ask for an email. And if you take that free training, you'll get 15% off the full course with lifetime access. So rigid fiber insulations can be composed of a much wider range of materials, but generally speaking, we're talking about products like rock wool comfort board, rigid fiberglass, rigid wood fiber board. There's now a new hemp fiber board product on the market. There's a cork insulation board that's being sold. So you can really see that there's a much wider variety of potential materials. Rigid fibrous insulation materials are vapor permeable due to their composition and how they're made. This is one of the main differences that sets them apart from rigid foam products, as we have a greater ability to dry through these materials if we need to. So there can be a little bit more forgiveness in that wall assembly, since we can either dry to the inside or to the outside. 
However, by that same effect, if you use a rigid fiber insulation product on the outside behind a reservoir cladding, you need to do something else to slow down inward vapor drive since the reservoir cladding can hold on to a lot of water and drive vapor inwards, and that can result in condensation on the backside of your drywall. And so if you use rigid fiber insulation, you need to make sure that the weather resistive barrier product behind it has some vapor retarder benefits. Not necessarily a vapor barrier, but something to slow down inward drive, let's say somewhere between five to 10 perms. Now, because there's so much variation between different rigid fiber products, some are more moisture resistant than others. For example, rock wool can get wet and be completely fine, whereas wood fiber insulation, hemp board, and cork can't really handle much moisture as they can deform and lose their thermal properties. Fibrous insulation materials tend to perform better than rigid foam products and fires as well. Rockwool is pretty much the gold standard when it comes to fire-resistant insulation materials, and the ongoing joke in the industry is that rocks don't burn. Wood fiber insulation also has very impressive fire-resistant properties, as they strip away a lot of the constituents that burn during the manufacturing process, and it's treated with paraffins. We use both rigid foams and rigid fiber insulations based on the performance and durability goals of the project, the local climate, and any other stipulations. Almost anything can be made to work, but we oftentimes need to assess what's appropriate for the application based on these various properties and the design considerations. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.